Our story begins with a beautiful view of the mountains and the maid in the castle complaining that her job is very hard. He has to work from dawn until the dead of night, or maybe the work is so hard that she is going to steal his money. The boy called a girl named Era, and she immediately turned to her master's request. Still, the young master was very worried about the girl because her work was very hard. But she just said that these were minor things and that everything would be fine with her. Nowadays, it is quite difficult to find a good job, and she will try and do everything to continue working in the castle. But the boy thinks that the girl talks too much, or to be precise, she's just lying, so he casts a spell in her direction. While the girl continued to pretend to be a good worker, the guy had already managed to find out all the information about her. The girl's name was Ira, and she was at the sixth level, and her abilities were acting, theft, and at the moment she was playing the role of a maid. Suddenly the boy becomes very sad, because it wasn't about hard work, the girl was going to betray the young master from the very beginning. But even in such a case, he also has an excellent plan. If she betrayed him anyway, he will play hockey with her goodbye. Meanwhile, we find ourselves in the real world where some fat guy sits in front of the monitor and tells us about the game, The Legend of the Heroine, a special genre of game where there are many adventures. But only one day this guy woke up and realized that he was in a completely different place. The ceiling was very different from what was in his house. After which he realized that he had become the hero of that very game, but at first it seemed to him that this was the most ordinary dream. But just looking at himself in the mirror, the guy tried to understand why he became the stupidest character of all. His name was Lucius. What this guy would soon have to face was the betrayal of a maid, after which he had to lose his best friend. And the peasant tenant of his estate will appropriate the taxes. In short, the situation is far from the best, and this character also terribly infuriated the main character all the time. The main reason why he infuriated him was that having simply incredible power and high status, he still remained deceived. At the very beginning, when the boy was just reborn in the new world and became this idiot, he was terribly confused, but now he clearly understands what he needs to do, because if he now has the character of the main character, then they will no longer be able to deceive him. First, he needed to deal with this damned maid who was going to deceive him. Lucius says that he will definitely think about the words that she told him, but for now, he asks her to call Robin. After Robin arrived, the main character reminds him about the report on the surveillance of Era, just as Robin had already managed to draw up everything and wants to report. After listening to an incredibly long story, our boy thanks him for a job well done. This means that Era often mentions accounting work and also often meets with a patrolman named Carl who has a lot of gambling debts. It didn't seem to Robin that they had a romantic relationship, but our main character thought that he had to stop the girl until she started committing her fraud. Still, he comes up with a brilliant plan and asks Robin that they conduct another check. It was necessary to settle this as soon as possible. In the corridor, he simply waits for the girl to appear and asks her to come with him and help him. They went to another part of the castle, and the girl saw a closed door with a password that she could easily hack. While the guy was entering the code, he asked the girl to lift one part of the table and be as careful as possible so as not to get any scratches. While she was helping him, she carefully examined all the jewelry and gold that lay there and thought about how to sell it all. Robin asked her to help him carry it all to the doorstep, but she thought that now she wouldn't need the accounting department because she could earn a lot more here. Meanwhile, night had already fallen and Era and some guy entered that dungeon, only the boy was very worried because if they were caught, they would definitely be sent to the next world. But she says that she is on duty on the night shift, and especially since it was early morning. If suddenly the guy continues to behave like a real coward, then it's better to leave. But still, gold turns out to be more valuable to him than life, and the guy stays to organize the biggest robbery in this castle. She somehow didn't care about him. It's better to let him shine for her while she picks the lock. Meanwhile, she thought that Carl was a real idiot, and after this robbery, she was going to stop communicating with him. After that, they find themselves in a room, and Ira said that the treasures of the naive idiot will now be in their hands. But everything is not so simple, and while they thought that they could live their whole lives with this money, Lucius was waiting for them here all this time with a club in his hands. While Carl was thinking about a carefree life, our main character deals him a strong blow right on the head. Since one had already been dealt with, only the maid remained, but Era began to beg the young master for mercy. She tries to justify herself by saying that Carl has been threatening her all this time, but our boy is not going to believe the words of the traitor. Meanwhile, in a dream, she heard that Lucius was saying that in a dream some donkey was smiling. They probably meant Carl. After she wakes up, she sees a gentleman in front of her who was very worried that something would happen to her. She immediately begins to cry and ask him not to send her to the next world. The boy trusted the lady all this time, and she just betrayed him and was going to steal the things of his late father. 
But she begins to get hysterical and continues to ask the guy for mercy, and he simply takes her by the shoulder. Suddenly, he says that according to the law, of course, she needs to be finished off, but he will make an exception especially for her. Ira calmed down a little and asked again if this really meant that the main character would forgive the girl and let her go. But of course, this is not true. He is just going to play hockey with her until he gets bored or until he dies. The girl simply cannot believe what the boy is saying because he is a clergyman. But he only says that this is a very generous punishment that he assigns as the owner of this estate. The lady was never a fan of playing hockey and therefore tried to give up this game, but the boy wanted to play. Lucius was completely sure that this was the most ordinary game of hockey that the girl received instead of execution, so let her be glad that she could still walk on this earth. Since Era still refuses to play hockey, the main character makes a new decision. If she shows her dissatisfaction again, he will send her to the next world at that very second. Still, punishment in the form of an ordinary game of hockey was much better than death, so she should be grateful to him that he did not spare her. If suddenly a lady likes this game of hockey, then the main character asks her to smile. Great. Because she knows that she will go to the next world if she doesn't like the game of hockey. And the boy turns out to be a real pro in this game. He even began to come up with his own tactics. But suddenly he heard a strange sound, like a girl crying. Does she really not like this game of hockey? But she immediately tries to cover her mouth with her hands so that he doesn't hear her crying. As far as he remembers, the boy did not forbid the girl to speak, but it's okay. It would be better not to tell her about it. It's quite funny to watch how she tries not to talk so as not to go to execution, and also tries to play hockey. Since our boy is already tired of the usual game of hockey, he decides to make it much more interesting so that it will be much more difficult for the girl to avoid execution. Since she can easily cope with his usual hockey shots, now he will show her a real master class on how to play correctly. Does she really not like playing hockey with him so much? The girl immediately begins to deny these words. Well, that's nice after all. No one wants to die today. Great! Since she has already figured out how to play hockey correctly, now the main character is not going to hold back his real strength. He just called the girl really funny since she is trying so hard to do everything just to avoid execution, but he can still beat her at hockey. Looking at her face, the boy understands that there are absolutely no emotions on it, as if the girl is specially hiding them so as not to show that she doesn't like playing hockey, but nothing. This will only make it more fun for him to watch her slowly lose. The guy looks like a real little devil, even though the girl deserved to be executed, but he turns out to be a kind person, so if she can hold out against him in a game of hockey, then she will receive forgiveness. Now the girl had only two options. Try to play and not show her emotions, or immediately give up and go to the next world. But she simply did not understand how she could fight against the real boss of this rocking chair. The main character was too serious an opponent for her. Seeing how he expertly used his skills to slide on the ice, she understood perfectly well that she could only win by a miracle. After the first goal, the boy begins to laugh like crazy, because the girl still showed her emotions. Of course, this did not mean that he would send her to execution. She no longer wanted to play hockey, but Lucius didn't care about that. She decided to rob the treasures that his father had been collecting all his life, and he couldn't just forgive her for such an act. Having made a very smug face, the main character asks if she really doesn't like this game so much that she doesn't try at all, but she again turns on the mode of complete absence of emotionality, because her slightest dissatisfaction is a ticket straight to the next world. And this idiot is still having a lot of fun. He liked the fact that the girl is trying not to show her emotions so much that he decides to start playing at full strength. But as soon as the boy flew past her like lightning, the girl was shocked, which means that all this time he did not show his true strength. Now she can only ask him that the guy not play against her at full capacity, but does she really think that her prayers will help her against the hockey master? Of course not, Lucius, on the contrary, began to play even more powerfully, not leaving her even one chance to win. And now it seemed that the game should be coming to an end, and the boy was even surprised by the fact that time had flown by so quickly. Ira already wanted to cry because she simply hated playing hockey, and asked if this was really the end of her terrible punishment. But this little devil just made a very cheerful face and said that, of course not. They had just started and they still had many rounds of hockey ahead of them. Well, here it is, a face full of despair, which understands that now she will have to play this damn hockey until she dies. After the girl lost consciousness, tears appeared in the guy's eyes. Did he really feel so sorry for Era? She fainted. Apparently, the game of hockey turned out to be too harsh for her. But nothing of the kind. This damn guy just says that he will wait until she regains consciousness, and then they will continue their exciting game of hockey. 
Well, the next morning after he played hockey with Ira, he did his usual business and prayed as a priest. He begged for his estate to be blessed, at least for the sake of those peasants who work here tirelessly, after which a second personality awakens in him and he asks that the value of the land rise to the skies, after which the prayer ends. Wow, it actually worked. Just like in the game itself, the land was enriched through prayer. Despite the fact that he managed to prevent Era's theft, now his price for land had skyrocketed, but there was still one unsolved problem. The problem was that Lucius, who was in the game, receives only 50% of taxes from the peasants. In addition, with the help of prayers, he made the lands enriched and now the peasants received more harvests. But these freaks did not pay off their debts properly, saying that the year was not very productive and the main character received only 10% of his earnings. They simply constantly deceived the owner of the estate and themselves stole grain and harvest and even the system warned him about the risk of bankruptcy. Ordinary peasants and their families did not care that the gentleman was on the verge of bankruptcy. They simply considered him a fool. Now Lucius began to think that there were many errors in the accounting reports. Perhaps there was some reason why everyone thought he was stupid. Suddenly he notices a cart with groceries outside the window and thinks that they have come to simply pay taxes. After this, the main character decides that it would be a great idea to arm himself with his favorite weapon and go out to talk to these guys. As soon as the gentleman left the estate, the bald dude turned to bow to him. For now, the guy is just playing the role of a very kind and sweet guy and asking how his employees are doing. Lucius looked carefully at his fat belly and his three guys who take a lot of grain, apparently they are evading taxes to find out what his name is, the boy decides to take advantage of the status window. While the fat man was saying that the next year did not bring much harvest and now he could not pay him the full amount, the guy looked carefully at his characteristics. There was fraud and the pursuit of personal gain. He begins to swear that next year he will work even harder, but Lucius already had his baton behind his back. The guy begins to smile at him and laugh nervously, which greatly frightens the fat man. The main character asks that they go to the lands that he gave them for work, but he immediately tries to come up with many reasons not to go there and asks why the gentleman needs this. He asked Robin to bring his horse, the fat man tried to object, but then the club appeared in his face. Does this fat guy just not understand what his master is telling him? He quickly went and showed him the damn lands. And now they were already there, and the fat man showed him that there was nothing on the field. Okay, let's forget about the field and let him open the doors to the house, let's see what's there. He tried to justify himself by saying that he called the maid today to clean up, because the house was a complete mess. But Lucius didn't care. He was already walking towards the house. Our main character does not stand on ceremony, so he simply breaks down the doors to the house with his baton. Entering the house, the boy saw two girls there. It seems these were not maids, but his daughters, and the girls did not understand what the hell had come to their home. Meanwhile, there were still many people in the house who were engaged in theft and were frightened at the sight of the gentleman. While the fat guy's lie counter was increasing, he asked the master for forgiveness and tried to convince him that he was innocent of anything, while Robin kept him away from the master. But Lucius is not a fool to take his word for it. Why then does he ask for forgiveness if he is not guilty of anything? The fat man decides to say that he actually has nothing to hide, and after the counter has increased by one more point, the main character begins to search the house. Having found the door to the basement, the boy again breaks the door with his baton while the fat man begs him not to go there. And in the basement, there were many bags of harvest and grain that he had been stealing from the fields for so long and diligently, making a very crazy appearance. Lucius asked how he was going to explain all this. Robin does his job well as a security guard, and the fat man says that these are just dummies that he keeps here. But the counter has increased by one more number. Well, since there are pacifiers there, then the guy will take and cut one of the bags. Surprisingly, a lot of grain fell from there. After the fat man realized that lying was pointless, he simply began to beg for the young master to forgive him just once. Realizing that this is a real shame for his entire family, he simply begs for forgiveness saying that he is not the only one who does this. While he was trying to understand why the gentleman only decided to do this to him, he received a strong blow with a baton right in the face. The boy tells his family that their father was found guilty of tax evasion, and therefore he was executed. And since they are all members of his family, he is going to deal with him to the fullest extent of the law. While his daughters begged him for mercy, Robin decided to intervene and said that it was better not to execute his daughters. How boring Robin is. Oh well, for now he will think about saving their lives, but for now let them take them to the estate and put them in prison. The next morning, Lucius began to see the results of his hard work. Immediately the peasants began to generate 10 times more income than before. 
If he can continue at the same pace, he will be able to restore his financial situation within a couple of months. Suddenly, the gentleman was distracted from filling out documents and informed that the nuncieri had come to him. Since he had solved several problems, it was time to deal with his childhood friend. It turns out that when she received a letter from him, she immediately decided to visit, and Lucius was surprised that his friend's description turned out to be much better than he thought. Suddenly, the boy even starts crying and says that when he heard that their owner was bothering them, he felt so bad for them. For some reason, the lady also starts crying and says that she couldn't even imagine that the main character was so worried about them. But the boy says that now they have nothing to worry about, because now they will be under his protection, he is the owner of the estate, so now they can work here. The lady immediately begins to thank the young master because he saved them from the terrible guy, but only he will have one condition. He just comes up to her, takes her hand, and says that when they are together, she can call him Lucius. Judging by the characteristics, the girl begins to like the main character and agrees to call him by name. Just look at this sincere face full of kindness and positivity. What a pity that the nun doesn't know that the guy just wants to play hockey with her. After the nun found out how things were going at the estate, she urgently asked the boy not to execute Ira and the fat man's daughters. To begin with, the main character decides to go down to the basement. Since he was asked not to kill his daughters and Era, he decided to sell them for a good price. Suddenly, the girl just looks at him with a crazy look, and Lucius cannot understand what the hell happened to her. Has a couple of days in the dungeon really changed her so much? The guy with glasses was even glad that he could buy her. But no, the main character says that those two daughters were opposite. He liked them too, a great addition to the collection, but he asked the young gentleman if something could be done so that they could no longer speak. Still, they could tell something about the main character, so Lucius decided to rid himself of this problem, by the way, and Era really went crazy while she was in the dungeon. But looking at her hysterical laughter, our boy thinks that she is just pretending to be let out. After which, that abnormal guy with glasses comes up to him and asks if he wants to get rid of the girl with pink hair. The boy even thought about his proposal, but only when he turned around he saw that the girl was no longer there. She just sat in the corner and turned her head, making it clear that she did not want to leave with this abnormal person. Lucius was in shock. The guy with glasses began to persuade him because he could pay well, but Lucius said that as long as she was useful, he would not part with her. In such cases, the guy simply takes what he has and leaves, and the girl immediately after this begins to aggressively shout at the main character. Yes, she really does a good job of portraying a person who has gone crazy, but Lucius sees everything. Era is too pretentious. Well, the guy seems to have already given her enough time for her to admit her mistake, but she has not comprehended it. In such cases, the boy came up with a special punishment for her, and will carry it out in three days. And until that very day, the main character promises that he will treat her as well as possible. Three days have already passed, and the action is moving in front of the city walls. The lady with pink hair was so worried, and she just needs to walk through the whole city with this damn sign around her neck. It doesn't sound as bad as she thought. Still, she thought that the main character was a naive fool, and was going to crush his image by spreading rumors about him. After the announcement of the execution began, the boy introduced everyone to the girl who committed the crime, and in order to repent, he must be punished. She had to go through the entire city and endure any insult that the residents would say to her. If she could handle it, she would be forgiven. And yet she stood with a happy face and thought that she could carry out this punishment as easily as possible. When suddenly the unexpected happens, it turns out that everything is not as simple as she thought, and now it will be much more difficult to carry out the punishment. And finally, our boy was happy. He warned her that if she falls to the ground, the punishment will start all over again. But now she no longer pretends to be as crazy as before. She simply calls the main character a real freak who completely ruined her life. It turns out that there was a special reason why so many people came to watch her execution. There was an announcement on the sign that the girl would have to walk all over the city to be forgiven. And everyone was interested in this because back then there were no televisions and they wanted to see the spectacle. Well, in short, for the last three days, the main character has been running advertisements about his performance and thus became aware of the real crowd. You may think that this is too much, but this lady was going to deceive him and therefore deserved everything. Let her know how to deceive him next time. She wanted to steal the things of his father, who died, was released from the death penalty, and also pretended to be insane so that she would be released. So this is the best punishment she can have. Just walk around the city and ask everyone for forgiveness. Suddenly, someone pushed her, the girl lost her balance and fell, and of course Lucius noticed this. Realizing what was about to happen, she began to beg him to take pity on her because she didn't fall on purpose. But is anyone going to listen to her words? Everyone was just interested in watching the hockey game. 
Realizing that the situation was a little out of control, the main character began to blow the whistle. He already said that if she falls, then everything will start all over again, so the execution will continue tomorrow. That day the girl behaved completely differently. She cried and said that she realized her mistake. She promised that she would definitely change and would do as the young master said, only she didn't want to play hockey anymore. Looking at her characteristics, she really realized her mistake. She was terribly scared and she begged Lucius to stay with her. It seems that he overdid it a little, but still the result is noticeable. Just look at this satisfied smile, of course. The boy has had his own plan for a long time, which he does not talk about. The joy that the girl realized her mistake lasted for a long time, because the next morning the guy came and began to complain that Lucius had taken the nun from the estate from him. It turns out that this is the same lord who treated his childhood friend badly, so the boy tries to explain to him that he has no power over the will of the clergy, it belongs only to them. But he was the lord of the state where she lives, why the hell did he steal her? But he was trying to play hockey with his girlfriend, this is not the behavior of a lord. Since this caused him such dissatisfaction, the boy decides to compensate him financially for the damage. He doesn't need his damn money, the Lord just leaves but promises to remember this act once and for all. After which Robin is about to enter the room and Lucius invites his faithful warrior. It turns out that he had just great news because the guards managed to catch the bandits. Armed with his favorite weapon, the main character decides to go out and talk to them personally. Meanwhile, on the street there were several guys caught by the guards. Lucius asked Robin about the punishment provided for bandits well, execution. Of course, they didn't really like this sentence, and they began to ask the master for mercy. Has no one in this manhua yet understood that prayers do not help? But suddenly, the nun intervenes and asks the young master not to do this, Sierra. Why the hell are you interrupting all the fun? But the lady simply could not go against the principles she was taught. Instead of immediately sending them to the next world, she offers to give them a chance to atone for their actions. The daughter of that fat guy, then Ira, and now she asked him to spare the lives of the damned thieves, and at this rate our main character would lose all his authority, and they would no longer be afraid of him. But his goal is much higher than simply killing bandits, so let them atone for their deeds. In fact, the main character just really wants to play hockey with the nun. He simply says that all this time he was thinking from the position of the owner of the estate, and completely forgot that he had a duty as a priest. Now the girl was happy. Her opinion of him as a priest also matters, and the main character can pretend no worse than Ira. Seeing that there is a chance for salvation, one of the guys hits his head on the floor and asks for forgiveness, saying that he wants to change if the gentleman gives him another chance. The boy, meanwhile, just stood and looked at him, and in his thoughts thought that this guy was specially apologizing at that moment when he could not answer him. All the guys began to repeat after their friend and ask for forgiveness, but Lucius did not understand how they could all be so deceitful. But while the nun was nearby, the main character could not do anything with them, so he decided to give everyone a house and a plot of land. It would be better if they worked for him and were useful, and they would also be involved in religious activities. They swear to him that they will do everything possible to improve, and the nun was glad that Lucius did not send them to the next world. Until recently, the main character did not believe that freaks like them were capable of changing, and therefore asked her to look after them. Although they had a strong friendship, this event would clearly change their relationship and, as parting, he asked the girl not to let them stray from the true path. As Lucius thought, pardoning those idiots was a very big mistake, and they almost immediately decided to step on the same rake. The rest of the workers were simply shocked because the thieves were given a house and plots of land where they could work. But they were quite impudent, and said that if something did not suit them, they could go to the master and complain to him. But still, the old man could not understand why Mr. Lucius gave the land to such trash as they. These words greatly hurt their pride and they were about to start a fight, but the guards stopped them. Now a real scandal began between the villagers and the bandits, and the nun watched all this. Now she was worried that she was to blame for this because Lucius did it precisely at her request. Still, the thieves could not get along with the residents, and meanwhile the guy arrived at the very place that was in the game. At the beginning of the game, Lucius is level 40, the thieves boss is level 20, and the minions are level 10. Having carefully examined the guard, who is only level 15, he understands that he can calmly cope with him. In this case, he decides not to hesitate too much, and immediately attacks while he is distracted. After which, having passed through the security, the boy begins to attack everyone who was in the camp. No matter how hard they tried, no one could even hit the guy, and he had already dealt with a decent number of soldiers. It was probably too late to introduce myself, but his name is Lucius, he is the lord of the lands of Pat. 
He was going to complain that three thieves had recently stolen something from him, but they didn't listen to him and immediately went to attack. Of course, Lucius doesn't like being interrupted, so there's instantly one less thief. In short, he came here with a request. Since there is only one thief left, he says that he will gladly fulfill any request of the young master. Well, that's great. And the boy was very happy and said that he should threaten those bandits who tried to rob him. If he does, the gentleman will leave him alive. The next day, the thieves betrayed him and the main character came to them to take revenge. Of course, the verdict is already known to you, after which he ordered the archers to get rid of what was left. The boy just stood looking out the window, thinking that the nun had already found out about everything, so she just wanted to talk to him. Entering the office, she sees the main character sitting by the window in far from the best shape and begins to worry about him. She heard the news that the guy had a run-in with bandits, and she immediately arrived to find out how he was. Yes, his acting skills are definitely much better than Era's. He comes up with a story about how he wanted to negotiate with the bandits so that they would leave his land, but they tried to finish him off. The girl was simply horrified, but he decides to put pressure on the complaint and says that he tried to act on her advice and become a good priest, but it seems that they do not understand this. From such a shock, she just starts crying and tells Lucius that it's her fault. If she hadn't meddled in his affairs, this situation definitely wouldn't have happened, and you'll find out what happens next in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Like it for a new part came out as soon as possible.